How you guys doing today? We are going to be going over uh, everything you need to know and everything you don't need to know about Microsoft Edge. A um, little background on Microsoft Edge real quick. It is also referred to as Project Spartan. Um, back from when they you know, first released you know, all their stuff about announcing Windows 10 and you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, uh, basically it is in, it uses the engine Edge HTML which is a non-legacy stripped down version of uh, I, I believe it's called Trident from Internet Explorer. For all essential purposes it is basically just Internet Explorer uh, stripped down into the essentials to make it work properly um, and then with some fun little features and doodads thrown in there for effect. Now the first thing you're probably going to want to know is it is um, also uh, in Windows, it's in Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and Windows Server 2016. Um, whether or not they're going to continue it forward into other projects will depend on its success. Um, in a few ways that you can open it, obviously when you upgrade or install Windows 10, uh, it's going to give you, it yeah, defaults to giving you a little tab down here on the, uh, on the taskbar. Um, next is you can come over here, they've also pinned it to your, your start menu. Uh, you can come into all apps and scroll down to Microsoft Edge and go to it that way. The next way that you can do it is you can come in here and uh, you can type in uh, Microsoft or Edge and it, that's one of the first things to pop up because they want it in your face. They, they, they're they like, hey look what we can do. And so they put it pretty much everywhere. Uh, the next thing you can do is if you want to, you can ask Cortana to open it. I've been kind of having some issues with uh, Cortana opening through voice command, so we'll see if it even works right now. Hey Cortana, open Microsoft Edge. Opening Microsoft Edge. And see, it worked pretty flawlessly right there. I, just, I have to speak up for whatever reason and make it pretty loud in order for it to work. So we've got Microsoft Edge open. All right. It defaults to using um, to opening whenever you you open it from a completely closed you know standpoint uh, to this to this kind of start page here. Uh, and it's got some it's got some stuff tailored to you, news, car stuff for me. Ooh, look, Snoop Dogg. And uh, you want a tour Hilly Swank's apartment? Ooh, that sounds fun. Any hoosies. Um, so basically, from up here, you can you can start off by using a search or web address. Um, I'm gonna completely, I, I'm gonna completely just start right here at the beginning and say that I think that this is very very Chrome esque. I feel like they took a lot of features, the feel, the whatever from Chrome, made it their own, and just. <sighs> Unfortunately, the only problem is that it is missing some key features, but I'll get to that kind of when I do like a little overview at the end. Anyways, so we're going to start off over here. Uh, standard tab setup, uh, add a tab, get rid of a tab. Um, we've got the refresh and the home page, which my home page is set to Google. Um, you've got your back button as well. Coming across here, we've got our URL bar, which is also a full featured search. Uh, search engine, which you can set in the settings to whatever search engine you'd like. I have it set to Google because I like Google, and I am not a Bing person. I am sorry. So if we want to go ahead and Google, um, we're going to Google Slinky here real quick, um, and we're going to go to Wikipedia, uh, and that'll get us started on a couple of our first things over here. The first thing I want to go over is WebNote. The reason I'm going over WebNote first is because it's probably my favorite feature. Um, WebNote is really, really cool. I think it's going to be good for somebody uh, in doing work or school work or whatever, what have you, um, because it allows you to actually take a web page, uh, highlight things on it, draw on it, make text markups and whatever, clip specific parts out, and save and or share them. Um, so coming over here, you notice how some of them have this little, this little triangle down here. This one does, this one does. These two do not. Um, what that does is once you've clicked on it once, once you click on it again, it'll actually open up options. Uh, so you can you can change the size and the color of your highlighter marker, and uh, on a race you can clear everything off the page. So we're going to start off here with highlight, and we're going to highlight um, a couple of things real quick, uh, just real quick. There we go, uh, and then we can we can draw some stuff, and then. We're gonna go over here. The the eraser works kind of funky. It's not really click. See how I just clicked on it? It didn't do anything. Click again, and it did. But if we just hold down and wipe over it, then it goes away. Whatever it touches, it will go. It will make it go away. Same thing with all your highlighting. All right. Next thing, which we're gonna go ahead and highlight some of this for fun, is actually um, is actually this this cutout thing. 
And what it allows you to do is it allows you to cut out a specific piece. And so you can copy it, you can share it, you can save it, you can do whatever you need to do. Alright, next. Text box. <sighs> Potato. So you can actually you can actually leave um you can actually leave text on your page. And it, it leaves this one there, and you can actually get rid of it later too. But in order to mess with it, adjust it, do anything, you have to come back to this and uh, and get rid of it. I left a dot. That's gonna bother me. Hold on, hold on. I gotta get rid of the dot. Get rid of the dot. All right. All right. So um, if you come over here, this is your save button. This is your share. So once you've done anything and you want to save it or get rid of it, you can actually uh, do so uh, from from that point. All righty. So we're gonna exit now. All right. Next thing over here is also share. Uh, so it's kind of got an in general share, and then it's got a specific share, which the sharing is just for just for web notes. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. This is called the hub. These three lines. Um, we've got favorites, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, the reading list, which allows you to save an article for later. You've got your history, and you've got your downloads page, which allows you to open uh, open your downloads folder. Uh, then what this little this pin does is, if I click anywhere outside of this area, this side this sidebar here, it will actually close it. But if I want to leave it open for whatever reason, all I have to do is hit that. It readjusts whatever I need to do. I click over here, and it won't go away until I get rid of it. Same thing uh, with when you would like open settings. You can open settings and then leave it there. Play with your settings and do whatever. I think that's pretty cool. Um, whether or not I'm going to use it or not is going to probably depend. Um, next thing over here is called reading, uh, the reading mode. Um, so I'm going to go to, let's go to Google and we're going to type in Microsoft Edge Keyboard. Shortcuts, and we're going to open this up. And then, what reading list, reading mode actually allows us to do is um, it'll allow us to click this, and it will take away all the junk. Now, I have noticed it's been a little bit not quite working right on certain things. Like, I don't know if you notice here, but it literally just looks like a couple of uh, a couple of forum entries, which is actually what these are. So, you know, we got Sean here, and then we got Hello Voyager. Uh, if I undo reading view. You can notice here, none of this showed up in that page whatsoever. This entire chart of all that. But we got Sean, and we've got Hello Voyager, because all it did was take stuff out of out of these entries. It got rid of any of this junk. I think I got rid of all the all the um, any images, videos. Uh, basically, it only left text, uh, which is good and bad. But I've noticed it still isn't quite working up to par for what I would I would hope it would do. Um, anyways, coming over here into settings. So um, another thing that makes it very Chrome-esque is the fact that we have this in private, which I guess would be equivalent to um, uh, what's it called in Chrome? Um, what is it? Oh, huh. it's incognito. I don't know where it went, but yep, incognito. Any hoosies. So we've got, also we've got zoom here. Uh, you can notice there's not a whole lot of options in this part. Uh, find on page allows you to find, um, allows you to find different things. So we've got 28 entries of the word Windows. If I take away the S, we've got 36 because it also counts the Windows. It just doesn't, it doesn't complete it. So we also have some options in here so we can match the whole word, we can match the case, um, and, and that's pretty much it. So we can sit here and I can, I can skip through each one and it'll find all of them. This is one thing that I find really nifty uh, for if you're searching for that key thing in a forum. Uh, you just flip to a page, you type in the word, it doesn't come up, you go to the next page, etc, etc. Alright. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually hit Control F and that will open it. These have a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Um, next thing is print. That is pretty straightforward. Pin to start allows you to pin uh, whatever web page you're on down here. See how it showed up? Uh, we've got a 10 forms thing down here that we can actually click and it'll open this back up. I don't need that, so we're going to unpin from the start. Uh, next is going to be F12 Developer Tools. I think this is pretty cool. Um, we got a DOM, a DOM Explorer, we have console, debugger, network stuff, performance, memory, emulator, um, and experiments. So you can actually view view some of the HTML on a page. Um, I don't think that's going to be very useful for somebody that, that isn't an advanced user, but by all means, look at it, attempt to understand it, you know, 
do whatever you got to do. Next, open with Internet Explorer. Now, like I said, this is a stripped-down version of Edge or of of Internet Explorer, um, uh, and and basically, it's it's not it's not complete yet. In all honesty, it is not complete. It has some issues still. So, if you decide you want to default to Internet Explorer, I would say don't. I like Chrome, Firefox, Opera before I would choose Internet Explorer. Um, that button is there, it is available, it is ready to go. Um, next is send feedback, uh, which will allow you to send feedback, and then we've got settings, which I'm going to pin over here for a second. I am really peeved that there is no full theme thing that you can do. Pretty much any other, every other web browser that I like uh, has some sort of available theming, um, whether it's through a store um, or, or you know anything like that, but all you can choose is whether it is light or dark. I choose the light because it reminds me of Chrome, just because I think the dark would look better if it had a little bit more contrast, but it's just too much black. Um, so next thing you can do is you can actually show your favorites bar, you can choose what pages you want, to, how you want it to open, you can import favorites from another browser, um, change some other stuff, advanced features, you can show or not show your home button up here, I don't know if you noticed that went away. Uh, and you can also set what the home button goes to. Block pop-ups, Adobe Flash, Carrot Browsing, uh, Offer to Save Passwords, Form Entries, Do Not Send, uh, Do Not Track Requests. You can have Cortana assist you in Edge, which I'll show you here in a moment. Um, you can tell what search engine to use for your search for your uh, URL bar here. Um, uh, what what search engine to use for that? Uh, show search suggestions as you type. You can do change your settings with cookies, um, save media licenses, etc, etc. Um, so we're going to show you real quick, uh, I'm going to show you real quick how Cortana works. So you highlight whatever you want and then you right click and you ask Cortana. And it will pull up all the search suggestions from Bing, I hate Bing, which I'll probably never use this, but it'll actually pull up all your search suggestions for that. Now. I'm gonna I'm gonna say real quick we've got we've got a few things here that I uh, I am not a fan of and uh, the there's a few things missing first off is there's no bookmark sync you think with the Microsoft account and everything that you would be able to sync bookmarks between um, cross cross platform so if you've got your Windows phone and you've got your Windows computer. Um, especially how they were seeing, you know, they want Windows 10 to feel like, you know, you're going from, you know, one device to another and have it as smooth as possible. There is no way to uh, actually save your your bookmarks and have them sync with other devices. Um, next is there's actually no, you can't get any extensions or do anything like that. It's really closed right now, and I think for all intents and purposes, that's not a bad thing since they're still trying to figure it out. They don't want to throw an extra element in there, but they definitely, definitely need to catch up with Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, and everything in the fact that they've got, you know, themes they can do. You can, you can customize it the way you want. You can do extensions um, and sync things between computers because uh, I know on Chrome, uh, you can actually, um, with your Google account, you can actually, when you log into another computer, uh, you can log into your 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 Google account, and then it will, if you're on Chrome, it will automatically sync your Chrome. It'll change the theme to your normal theme. It'll pull up all your bookmarks, uh, and and it's it's really nifty, so that you can you really feel at home, you know, using somebody else's computer, or um, if you get a new computer, it's is really really nifty. So I feel like, I feel like, in all honesty, they still have quite a bit to do with this. They're not, they're not up to par with Chrome yet or Firefox or Opera or a lot of the other ones but by all means I feel it is a lot lot better than Internet Explorer um, especially referring to speed I don't know if you noticed um, go YouTube BAM it's up I've only got seven megs up and seven meg uh, roughly seven megs up and seven megs down for for internet speed and um, it, I haven't really had any issues it plays all YouTube videos fine if we go to Google Boom, it's instantaneous. It's actually, I feel like it has a lot of potential, but it's not quite there yet. Alright, so that is my overview of um, Microsoft Edge. Uh, if you feel I missed anything, just leave a comment and let me know. Alright. Peace.